Welcome to our virtual college series. We're very excited today to have Alexandria Hortonberry from East Carolina University located in Greenville, North Carolina with us here today. And she is actually local to the Richmond area. So she's our rep and she actually lives in the area. So that is wonderful. She's a great resource for you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass this over to her to get started. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank you for watching this recording and joining us. Um, my name is Allie Hortonberry. I am local to Richmond, so very close by, um, way closer than if I was in Greenville. So it's so nice to meet you guys. So let's go ahead and get started. So first, I wanted to just kind of start with our campus. If you've never visited our campus, um, we have a small satellite campus in Manio, North Carolina, which is about two hours from our main campus there in Greenville. It's called ECU Outer Banks. So ECU Outer Banks houses our integrated coastal studies program. So if that's something that might interest you, you would spend probably a little bit of time um, over there at our Outer Banks campus. But in Greenville, right down the road from main campus, you're gonna have our health sciences campus. It's about 10 minutes from main campus. Our athletics facilities, which are just about right around the corner from campus. And this is Dowdy Ficklin Stadium on game day. Our West Research Campus, which again is very close by to main campus. Um, something that's really cool and why I include this picture of West Research Campus is we are the East Carolina University Pirates and we do actually have a real pirate ship on campus. We have Blackbeard's flagship, the Queen Anne's Revenge. So in this picture, you can see our students studying and um, restoring the Queen Anne's Revenge actually. And I apologize, I have a baby in the, uh, right beside me. Uh, so I hope he doesn't get too loud. But then we have main campus and I'll have just a few um, pictures there in just a second. All right, so if you don't know where Greenville is, I've included this map to kind of give you a good idea. We're about two and a half hours from Richmond, it takes me about two and a half hours. There's never any traffic going south, which is nice versus, you know, going up north, you're always gonna get some traffic about an hour into your drive, but Greenville's about two and a half hours. We're an hour from the state capital of Raleigh. So lots of opportunities for our students there. Um, there's a major airport, um, you know, lots of businesses thrive there. And so it's also making Greenville thrive. And this is a breakdown of North Carolina by county. Um, so you can kind of see where we are. We're in Pitt County right there. We have um, over 20,000 students on our campus. And then we have 180,000 living alumni. So you would be joining a nice big pirate family if you were to join us at ECU. And then these are the pictures of main campus for those that maybe have never been on campus to take a tour. We are considered actually to be one of the most beautiful campuses in North Carolina. Obviously from these pictures, you can see why. Um, I have this nice close up um, of Dowdy Ficklin on game day. And then this is our cupola. So if you do join us on campus, you'll definitely um, go around the cupola. See, that's kind of our main feature on campus right there in the center of campus. These are the eight different colleges that make up our university. They house 84 different um, undergraduate degrees. So lots of options for you guys. And then we have over 70 master's degree programs and then 14 PhD programs. So a lot of different opportunities for you all and different routes to get to whatever career path you might be looking at. We are the only school in North Carolina to have a college of engineering, a dental medicine school and a medical school at the same institution. We are considered the health sciences University of North Carolina. We do graduate the most nurses and teachers in the state. So definitely a lot of opportunities for you guys here. Um, and we'll go into a few of them as well. We are also an undergraduate research facility. So what that means is we have research opportunities on campus, but they are not reserved only for our graduate students and our faculty. Our undergraduate students are um, able to do that undergraduate research. And we've had students that there's not a research opportunity that you know, they were looking for, and they actually can go to the uh, research department and get funding um, and, and do that research themselves and get funding through the school, which is pretty cool. To expand your horizons, we also have over 200 study abroad programs. They can range from pretty broad to pretty specific. So what I mean by broad is um, EC Tuscany is our most popular program. Um, it's right in the heart of Italy. Um, it's a year round program, or students can do a semester um, if they want to, whatever you wanna do, whatever's gonna fit your course of study. But um, when I say specific, you can take a look at our study abroad programs. I like to do it. I like to pretend that I'm still a student that can do these types of things. Um, I was a history major. And so um, I like to look at the history ones, but I also went to Ireland for my study abroad at my school that I went to. And they were actually doing one at ECU that 
was studying erosion on the Western Irish coast. So very specific there. I think that's pretty cool opportunity and they just have a lot other of other ones, you know, kind of go along with that. And you can take a look at those programs. If you just type in ECU study abroad into Google, you can take a look at what we're offering each semester. So something really important to switch gears here is how to apply. So if you're a senior watching this, of course, this is all gonna apply to you. If you're a junior or below, the deadlines tend to um, match up every year. Um, they're pretty similar. So you can kind of just keep those in mind for when you go to apply. But we are on Navigator and Common App. So um, I'm gonna go into how to apply for those, but they're the same process. Um, they're gonna be the exact same process, the exact same cost, this, that, and the other. Um, we just have those opportunities there however you want to apply. So we are on rolling admissions. We do encourage our students to apply early. When I say rolling admissions, that means that we don't have like a apply by September 25th date and you're gonna get your admissions decision by October 15th type of deal. It's you apply and you're gonna hear back from us within four to six weeks with your admissions decision. Our application opens up at the 1st of August every year. So it opened up August 1st this year. Um, two big deadlines you do need to keep in mind. However, you will need to apply to the university by October 15th so that you can um, know your admissions decision and whether you're eligible to apply for the Honors College by their application deadline of November 15th. Similarly, for um, merit-based scholarship eligibility, you need to apply to us by December 15th so that you can hit the January 15th deadline for most of our merit-based scholarships. But if you're not you know, gonna apply for the Honors College or any other scholarships, the final application deadline is March 1st. So you do have quite a bit of time to go ahead and get that to us. What makes an application complete? Again, this is the same for Common App and um, Navigator. We'll need the online application through either of those systems. That's gonna include an essay for both. There is a $75 application fee. However, we do accept fee waivers. So those would come through NACAC or College Board. They have their own processes to apply for those. You'll get the paperwork all filled out and then send it to us. But when you do your application, you'll just say, I have a fee waiver, but you will need to provide us with the fee waiver code before your application will officially 100% be submitted. If you have questions about that, um, Ms. Corbin probably would know that process and you can also reach out to me as well. Um, we would also need your high school transcripts from uh, your counseling office directly. We do like to see that those include your senior year courses, whether there's grades or not. We just want to know what you're taking, and I'll get into uh, why we kind of need that in just a second. Um, and then if you are dual enrolled, we'll need transcripts to come directly from the community college or college you're getting college credit from so that those will transfer in. So our expectations um, when we are reviewing you as a freshman is um, we take a look at your required high school transcript. So to give you guys an idea of where our students come in, our middle 50% of students come in at an unweighted GPA of a 3.4 to a 3.7. Um, and this is where that we want to see your senior grades come in. Um, minimum course requirements. Those are based off of a North Carolina high school graduation requirement. So um, four Englishes, four maths three sciences, one has to have some sort of lab attached to it, two foreign languages in the same language and two social sciences. So um, why I say we need to see your in-progress grades is you might be enrolled in your fourth English or your fourth math. Um, and we need to know that information to review your application with to make sure that you are going to hit those requirements and seeing that you're enrolled in it will at least give us something to kind of go off of. Um, and then we'll take a look at your essay, obviously, and the rigor of your high school curriculum. Things that are recommended but not required are test scores. So for 2022, we did go test blind, meaning we do not require those test scores. And if you were to send them in, we can't take them into consideration when reviewing your application. However, there is a potential that it could help you with math placement tests if you do decide to enroll with us, if we have those test scores on file, but you don't have to submit them. Um, again, that's just for 2022. Jury is definitely still out on 2023 and beyond. Um, and that decision for 2023 probably honestly will not be made until next summer because it is the North Carolina Board of Governors that does that for the entire UNC system. Um, but to give you guys an idea of our mid-range test scores, our students usually come in in a 1070 to 1190 SAT or a 19 to 24 ACT. And we do super score, meaning we take the best of each section if you send us multiple test scores. Recommendations are not required, but we do have a lot of students that do submit them and we will review them with your application and keep them on file. So I have mentioned the Honors College quite a bit. Um, this is gonna be our largest out of state scholarship opportunity. So something you guys might definitely wanna look into. Um, when we did require test scores for admission in the Honors College, um, we required a 1270 SAT, 27 ACT. 
3.5 unweighted GPA or a 4.0 weighted GPA, but the honors college, just like the admissions office, we went, they went test blind. So you don't have to have test scores to be eligible for the honors college for 2022. The application again is due November 15th for them. And so that means you do need to apply to us by October 15th. I just want to stress that a lot because they did move that, that deadline up by a month. Um, if you want to take a look at the tier level of the honors college, the award amount level, just to get an idea, I did include the link down there in the bottom left hand corner. Some cool things about the honors college is there's some, some specific classes that you take. You join a living learning community when you're on campus, which I'll go into in um, a few slides. You have... Um, early kind of admission to graduate, some of the graduate programs as an honors college student. And there is a specific um, residence hall that you would be put into, which is like preferred housing. Again, along with the financial award as well, which is what a lot of people are looking for. So um, paying for college outside of, you know, any sort of merit-based scholarships you're going to apply for is financial aid. So 75% of our students do qualify for some sort of uh, financial aid, whether it's scholarships, grants, loans, or some combination of the three. We do encourage all students to submit FAFSA. FAFSA is free, it opens up on October 1st. Our priority deadline is by March 1st, so you wanna to try to submit that so you can get your financial aid package as early as possible. Um, even if you don't think you're gonna get anything, do your FAFSA. I mean, it, you never know what you could get. Um, you never know if your situation is gonna change financially and having that on file will just speed up the process of how you can pay for college. <laughs> Okay, so we also we also partner with a small platform called Raise Me. So Raise Me um, can qualify you for what's called micro scholarships, which are usually smaller award amounts, but you can get a lot of them and they stack up. Those can be for things like perfect attendance, taking a specific course in high school, doing some sort of specific out, you know, um, extracurricular activity. It's free again. So just I would just recommend going on there and just taking a look, making that profile and seeing what you might be eligible for. Oh, I think I just clicked that link. Oops, okay. Um, so campus housing. So um, we have 15 different residence halls located to get, uh, in three different neighborhoods. So that's gonna be Central, which is kind of middle campus, West End uh, and College Hill. College Hill is the largest. It has about half of our residence halls in that one neighborhood. So you'll see a very large concentration of students in that area. We do require all of our incoming freshmen to live on campus unless they live in a certain mileage radius of the university. Obviously that's not going to apply to my students in Virginia. We have living learning communities, so I kind of mentioned this with the Honors College. Um, so what those are, are communities built on shared interests. You live, you know, in the same residence halls, students in the living learning communities. We have some for biology, uh, chemistry and physics, kinesiology. Um, there's one for engineering. Um, there's one for future pirate nurses, so our nursing students. And then we also have one for our transfer students, athletics, so on and so forth. You can see the full list right there. That's gonna keep you connected with students with like-minded interests. And that's just gonna help you have resources on a peer level to help you in your studies in your four years at UCU. Going along with campus housing, obviously, is gonna be campus dining. So we have 31 different dining locations across campus. That's gonna include two different dining halls, six convenience markets, and then 23 national names such as Chick-fil-A, Einstein Brothers Bagels, Subway. We have the only Raising Canes in the state on our campus, which is pretty cool. Um, Pan Express. And then we have a variety of food trucks that kind of um, stop by that like a rotating schedule on campus, including a Starbucks food truck. Um, and then we have a variety of flexible meal plans for our students to choose from whatever to fit your budget or what you want out of your dining experience. And then obviously, if you have any sort of dining restrictions or questions, I've included the link there at the top to get in contact with dining. So one of my favorite buildings on campus is our um, one of our newer buildings. It's the main campus student center. Um, it was completed, I believe, in the last five years. So it's extremely new, extremely state of the art technology all in there. It's 210,000 square foot. So it's abs absolutely huge. I joke that I went to a small private school um, right outside of Charlotte. And the student center is like the size of the campus of the school I went to. It is huge and there's lots to do for our students. So it has the Dowdy student store, the Black Box Theater. Um, there's a multi-purpose ballroom. Um, again, there's a lot of dining options in there. So the Panda Express, the Raising Canes, there's a, one of those convenience markets. There's also a homemade ice cream shop that I like to plug. The ice cream is delicious. If you take it to our campus, I highly recommend stopping by there in the student center. And then there's lots of meeting spaces and study areas for our students, as well as a gaming room on the side. A lot of our other campus resources are in there, like our diversity and equity office. 
our LGBTQ plus center, our women's center, Ladonia Wright Cultural Center, all that's going to be in the student center. So it's a great little hub for our students. Something else that I think is really cool is um, on the back of the student center outside, there's a 24 by 42 foot pirate vision screen, which we believe is the largest screen in eastern North Carolina. Um, student activities will show movies on there some nights. They always broadcast athletic events and the news, and it's absolutely huge. It's really cool to see. Um, so if you're on campus, you'll definitely see that when you go into the student center. Um, something that's really important, obviously, wherever you go, but particularly to our pirates, is getting involved. So we have over 500 student clubs and organizations for our students to choose from. That includes 15 campus ministries, 38 Greek organizations. I've included this picture here. We have a huge like campus activities fair when you basically right when you step foot on campus um, right after you move in there's um, some campus partners there so you can see in the back that tent says ECU Transit that's our public our bus system um, but like dining would be their campus living but then like most of our student clubs and organizations so you're going to be able to connect with whoever you need to connect with on campus to kind of make the best out of your four years um, and then I do like to plug this link right here student activities um, link you can go on there and type in the search bar um, whatever kind of interests you and it's going to pull up every club and organization that ECU offers that goes along with that interest so you can really get an idea of what you might want to join and get involved with when you're on campus and then what most people know us for is our athletics so this is again another nice close-up of Dowdy Ficklin on game day. We have 18 different NCAA Division I sports on our campus. We participate in the American Athletic Conference, and students do have access to tickets for all regular season home games. If you don't see a sport that you want to see in our NCAA list, we probably have it as a club sport at intramural. We have over 40 club sports in intramural sports, um, and what that means is you could either join like, um, you know, the ECU basketball team and play other little teams on campus, or you might play the basketball team from NC State. And it's not an NCAA level, but it gives you the opportunity to kind of continue on with something that you enjoy doing in high school, or kind of dip your toes into something you never had the opportunity to do in high school. And other ways that our students stay fit, um, we have two student rec centers. So we have weight and fitness areas in both indoor and outdoor pools, um, a full range of classes and equipment, state-of-the-art equipment in both of those rec centers. They have a climbing wall, indoor running track, and just a lot more. And I've included some pictures here to kind of let you guys see what our students do to stay healthy and, and fit on campus and off. They do um, also sponsor kind of some off-campus opportunities for our students to, to stay fit and kind of get out and, you know, have some fun. Okay, so parking and transportation, I mentioned that you can have your car as a freshman. Um, you just have to purchase your parking pass, but if you don't want to bring your car, we do have the largest university transit system in the state of North Carolina. That'll take you around campus and Greenville, so you'll definitely be able to get around. And speaking of Greenville, this is where our pirates call home. So we are kind of a hub for that part of the eastern part of North Carolina. Again, our proximity to Raleigh, we're fast growing um, and we just have lots of opportunities for our students. So we're in the top 100 best communities for young people, top 10 best small places for business and careers and top 10 college towns in the U.S. <laughs> And then just next steps, um, especially if you're not a senior, something that's going to be really important is for you to stay connected. So you can follow ECU admissions on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can contact us there. That's our general info. But in the yellow box, really important, that's my information, guys, to stay in contact with me, ask me questions. Um, I'm also going to give Ms. Corbin um, a link to the Navigator account. So what that does is that keeps you connected with me, keeps you updated on ECU. You will have to create a Navigator account when you apply anyway, so you can already just go ahead and have one on file and log in when you want to go to apply. So at this time, I'm going to stop sharing, and I just want to thank you guys again for, for joining me, and please hit me up with any questions you have. Thank you so much. That was amazing information, and the campus is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. So one question. So the um, the Outer Banks campus that you mentioned. So do students take specific classes, programs there? Would they take do all four years there, or is that something they do like junior senior year? Yeah. So since that that just specifically houses our Integrated Coastal Studies program, um, it is pretty specific courses there. But we have had students that like they're not really part of those, and they can go take classes there if they fit into their course of study. I mean, if there's something that, you know, maybe they're in biology and there's something there that they can take that will go along with their biology degree, they can definitely do that. 
Um, there's a potential that they could spend four years there, but most students I don't think do. I think the most is maybe like a year, but there's housing there. Um, so you do have housing provided um, and there's like kind of a small campus community feel there and resources as well. Um, so yeah, that's our integrated coastal studies program. Um, and we have some great staff members over there that are you know happy to answer any specific questions for students that might be interested in joining the campus over there. That's great. Yeah, I didn't even know that was there. So that's really helpful information. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's fairly new. It hasn't been there for super long. Um, and of course, unless you're in the Outer Banks, yeah, you probably don't know it's there. Well, that's great. Well, thank you again for joining us today. And students who are watching, make sure you reach out. Um, make sure you you know get in contact with the representative that is in your area. She's right here in Richmond and has so much information for you. So thank you again.